I created a series of auto actions in Clipsio Paint that I think are really gonna help you and speed up your workflow. I know it has for me. I'm gonna show you those right now. I guess first and foremost, it's important to know how to install auto actions. Simply go to window, auto action down here. It'll pop open the auto action panel. And then we wanna go to import set. So from here, I'm gonna go down to my Triple Jazz's Helpful Artist Actions 2025. And yours, it'll be named something different based on the gum road. It's probably just be my Helpful Artist Actions. So double click on that and it'll import them. And now you see we have this list of auto actions. Now, the first thing you can do to really help you speed up your workflow in this is go up to the top here and set this to button mode. So now when you just click on one of these, the auto action will perform. You don't have to hit the play button in the bottom right on the panel anymore. So the first one is the animation folder setup auto action. You're gonna need a timeline first. So let's create a new timeline and let's hit animation folder setup. So you see what it's done is it's created one frame and inside that frame is a group folder. And in the group folder is a vector layer for lines and below that is a raster layer for colors. So I just made this because I had to keep doing this for professional projects where I was setting up basic animation stuff. And so this is just a helpful way to do that. The next auto action is Bloom. This is kind of a work in progress. So keep an eye on, uh, if you download this, just keep an eye on any updates that I might send your way for this specific thing. But so you'll see that it gives it a nice pop. Now, obviously we can modify this, you know, reduce it. If you just take a gray layer and set it divide, it kind of creates this bloom. Uh, alternatively, I also just included these like sort of Gaussian blurred layers that you can sort of mess with and fun post-processing effect. Speaking of, I have a chromatic aberration auto action. Now this is for anyone who doesn't own 3.0 because in 3.0, there's a chromatic aberration filter now. So, but if you don't have 3.0, here is something helpful for you guys. It creates a chromatic aberration folder, creates a blue, green, and red essentially channel. And now you can move these around as you want, right? Right or left, up or down. And you get this nice, just use it with your uh, keyboard keys, very, very light touches to everything. So you get this cool chromatic aberration effect. The next one is my colored line art auto action. So I have a tutorial on how I made this, but you don't even need the tutorial anymore because now we can just do this super easily. So what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna find your color folder. You're gonna wanna click on it, holding down alt key and click on your color folder. This is going to isolate it. Now you're going to apply the auto action. We're gonna click and drag this on top of our line art and turn everything back on by clicking Alt again on the layer that we isolated. Everything should be back on. So what it's done is it's created a solid, solidified, flattened version of all your colors and then expanded them out and then added this hue saturation on top that you can modify now if you wanna get a little bit punchier or even like change the colors around, right? And this is the way that I color my line art. And now it's an auto action, so it saves you a lot of time. This next one is pretty niche, but I'm gonna show you effectively what it does. What this does, convert layer to gray. So if you right click on a layer, you go down to convert layer, you can change the layer's expression color. To make brushes, the expression color of the layer that you save has to be gray. So by setting this to gray, I just saved you a few menu shortcuts. So convert layer to gray. You'll see now that it's gray. And now we can register this as a brush preset tip and all that. So there's that pretty niche, but it is what it is. Similar to the crop selection. I basically made this for a production. There was just a series of images that I had to crop and then save out. And it was just taking a lot of time. So this is an auto action to do that. So once you have a selection, what it's going to do is it's gonna cut everything out inside of it and then save it. It's gonna ask you where to save it. You understand. It effectively just crops everything to a selection and then hits control S. Isolate is for when you just get bogged down in your layers and you really just wanna focus on one thing. You're gonna hit isolate. And what it's gonna do is it's going to take the layer above and isolate it and then add a white background beneath it. So now you can just focus on that layer. And if you wanna get all your layers back, again, just hit, hold down alt and click on the layer above the white sheet called isolate and you'll get all your stuff back and then just turn that off. Noise, this is for anyone with Clipsio Paint 3.0 or more. You can hit noise and it generates a soft light noise layer on top of everything. It looks very nice, just an easy way. Again, it saves you just a lot of menu clicks. But if you do not have Clipsio Paint 3.0, I have a version for less than 3.0. Now, unfortunately, there is no such thing as colored noise before 3.0. So it still gives this very nice, subtle, grainy effect, but it's not colored. It is simply monochromatic noise versus 
The one in 3.0 is colored noise and I just think that looks better. Looks more like film grain. Paint and sharpen. What this does is this flattens everything, puts it on a new layer, sharpens it, and then allows you to paint in. Now the reason that I made this is because this is a very common technique in painting for riot splash art and realistic painting. But the problem is that Clipsio Paint doesn't have a sharpen tool. This is kind of a ghetto way to create a sharpen tool. So there you go. And then you just paint black and white here in the mask and it reveals or unreveals the sharpen. This is one of my favorites. This is called Redline. And what this does is this creates, basically it puts you in art director mode. So what it does is it creates a group folder called Redline. It's gonna fill your screen with white at about 80%. So you can kind of just see everything right below it, make it translucent. And then it's going to add a layer set to red and blue. And this is corresponding to black and white. So check this out. When I use white, I get blue. And when I use black, I get red. Now what this is helpful for is if you wanna art direct, you make notes, uh, shape here, you know, needs to be corrected. Just make notes yourself. Just quickly sets up a way for you to redline your own work or someone else's work and make notes, what's working, what's not. And I'm actually gonna go over this in my new character design course that I'm working on. I'm gonna show you how to art direct properly and become your own art director. And so this is the, one of the key ways that I do it. It's just this helpful little auto action. And then I have this gel pen that I love to use to make notes with. I'll include in my new brush pack as well. Silhouette fill. So this one is not niche. I use this quite often. All right, so what this is gonna do is when I make a selection of something, I'm gonna select the outside of something. And then the auto action is going to fill the inside of it. And this is just a shorthand, quick way. It saves me a lot of work when I'm producing stuff for work-related professional tasks of just filling in silhouettes all the time. So when you hit silhouette fill, you will get this, a white fill on the inside because we're effectively selecting the outside of the lines and then the auto action is going to fill the inside. Drag that below and now you have a nice base to start coloring off of. Turn layer to grayscale. It basically just turns any layer that you have into grayscale. Click on that and it turns it into a grayscale. Cool. Terminator color. So what this effectively does is adds an outer stroke to all of your shadows to create that nice like subsurface scattering along the edge of a Terminator. You should check out my video, three reasons your cell shading sucks if you're confused about what I'm talking about, but effectively along the Terminator of things, it can create a nice subsurface scattering effect and you can get, get some punchy color in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find my shadow layer here. I'm gonna select it. Um, by holding down control and selecting the shadow layer, right? Hold down control, press my layer, boom, it made a selection. Hit Terminator color. It's gonna ask me how many pixels I want expanded. I think I'm gonna keep it at two. And then now what it does is creates this nice outer stroke on all of my shadows. And so, and it sets it to linear light. This is a hard version of it, but you can just add a quick Gaussian blur if you'd like to get a softer look to it. And you can also increase the color. And last but not least is something I stole from someone else. I don't know who made this. This is like, I found this years ago, but it's super helpful. This is a value check. So if you click values on, it's going to throw a layer at the top of your stack in and turn your whole picture grayscale. Cool. And then if you turn values off, it's gonna get rid of it. Duh. Now here's the cool part. If you go to file shortcut settings and you go down to your auto actions, you can set any of these to a hotkey. So I have values on and off set to alt Q and shift alt Q. So when I'm painting and I'm like, I don't know, I need to see my values really quick, just black and white. This is like a composition trick. So if I press alt Q, now I can see my composition. Perhaps it'd be more helpful on something like this where I'm actually focusing on composition and this is obviously a work in progress painting, but press Alt Q, just hit okay, cool. And then I hit Shift Alt Q and it gets rid of it. And this works on any amount of layers. So if I'm on the very bottom here and I press Shift Alt Q, it'll get rid of the top one. If I press Alt Q, it puts it on top again. Very cool. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy these auto actions. I'm gonna be updating my brushes again here soon as well. So keep an eye out for those. And I also have some VizDev brushes on the way that I think are gonna be really exciting. Those are gonna be paid because uh, I've 
curated them, put a lot of time into them. And lastly, I wanna announce a couple of new things. One, I'm working on a character design course. It's something that I've been putting together for the last month or so. I've been working on the art. I can even show you a little preview here of what the character looks like so far. Here is the character. His name is Scarper. He's the main villain in Magic Punk, my comic, volume one. And I'm gonna teach you how I created this art from start to finish. I'm also gonna make a whole section dedicated on design principles and shape language that I think is gonna be super valuable. If you're interested in that, pick up my auto actions, pick up my Clipsio paint brush pack for free, and it'll just put you in the loop on my email newsletter when that drops. Also, I have a Patreon where you have access to my time lapses, my thoughts on my creative process, and the Clipsio paint files, and any brushes that I created while making the art. I already have a behind the scenes look at the creation of this guy and my character design course there, as well as some other magic punk goodies and some other personal projects. So it's five bucks a month, go check out my Patreon. And again, I hope these auto actions help you go and make good.